No, it's okay. It's okay. I can see my face from there. Good. <laughs> okay, welcome to my shop, everyone. This is my shop. <laughs> so uh, the title of my investigation is Integrating Indigenous Knowledge into STEM Education in Indonesia. Um, I know you're coming from different majors. And so I need to explain what, explain some terms first. The first one is, I would like to explain about STEM education. So many of you are familiar with STEM education? Are you familiar with STEM education? So STEM education is um, uh, is an initiative to combine four subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics into one integrated subject. The reason is because uh, subjects that we have now, which is science, math, which is separated, it's, it's just theoretical. So when you come to the real life, you don't use only one subject to solve problems, right? So you need to combine the different perspectives, different subjects to solve problems. So the idea of integrating these four subjects into one, which is called STEM, is actually trending now in science education world. And uh, there are some problems of uh, integrating these four disciplines into one, including the availability of infrastructure and also the, the context, because Mostly when we learn about science and mathematics, what we learn is the system taken from Western countries, right? You know, the modern science and mathematics that we learn, it, it's coming from universities, coming from Western countries like America, Europe, you know. So it, there is a need to include the context of Eastern countries like traditional uh, context into science. That is why uh, this idea come up where we need to integrate indigenous knowledge yeah, into STEM education. Indigenous knowledge here means like knowledge coming from local communities, like traditional communities. You know, they survived a long time using their own uh, knowledge that they, they learn from their life, you know. So by integrating indigenous knowledge into STEM educations, we got to big benefits actually. The first one is for access to STEM education. So better access for STEM education. You know, to have quality STEM education, you need, you know, you need fancy lab, right? Uh, teaching materials, technology, anything which is not available in rural, rural school, for example, especially in Indonesia. So now by integrating indigenous knowledge into STEM education, you have quality STEM education, right? With the local wisdom. And benefit number two is to increase uh, what I call as cultural literacy, right? Which is main problems, not only in Indonesia, I guess, in many countries that, you know, as technology emerging, you know, globalizations, kids forgetting about their identity, many things, right? So by integrating indigenous knowledge into STEM education, um, I mean to get these two benefits. So here you can read that the integration of indigenous knowledge into STEM education based on uh, research got several benefits. First, makes STEM learning more accessible, meaningful and relevant to students' daily lives, which is important. Yeah, I see that uh, in previous presentations over there that uh, you need to make learning more practical. So by integrating indigenous knowledge into STEM education, you bring the daily life context of students into the into the classroom, especially in STEM learning. The second was the second one is uh, this integration can reinstate parents and community members' involvement in education, which is not really uh, happening now, right? Education is between only between teachers and students, right? We can find no no more um, involvement of community members and parents in education, but by using this integrations, we can take back this uh, involvement into education. The next benefit is encourage students' interest and pride in their heritage and cultural knowledge, and then counter students' negative perceptions of traditional culture. You know, what does it mean by negative perception of traditional culture? So students perceive traditional culture as out, out of school, like uh, ancient, you know, 
and not and irrelevant to their daily life. So this integration counters this. But several studies uh, have pinpointed challenges that teachers face in incorporating indigenous knowledge into STEM education. There are actually two main uh, challenges that hinder teachers from inco incorporating EK into STEM education. The first one is the curriculum and educational system which is limited guidance on EK in STEM curriculum, and then limited teaching uh, time. You know, we have limited teaching time in our curriculum in Indonesia. So when you do this integration, it will be a problem. You, will, you don't have enough time to do this. And then next is teachers pressured for test focus in instruction. And uh, challenges number two is limited teaching materials, like limited EK textbooks, indigenous knowledge textbooks and teaching resources. And then STEM teachers do not have sufficient EK. Yeah, you know, especially in urban, urban schools. And, you know, young teachers do not really have indigenous knowledge because since they were primary school, they learn in the Western cultural uh, science, right? So not all teachers have indigenous knowledge or understand traditional culture. And then, Students have different AK. Which one should we teach, right? In a class, let's say you have 30 students, and each student have different AK. So which one should you incorporate into your science teaching? That's a problem, right? So my investigation is actually aimed to explore uh, STEM AK integration strategies that do not necessitate teachers to possess AK, nor to rely on teaching materials, OK? So this is my investigation question. What pedagogical strategies can STEM teachers in Indonesia use to integrate indigenous knowledge into STEM education? So I'm exploring uh, the emerging pedagogical strategies in the literature. The significance is actually two, right? For STEM teachers, it can be uh, a reference for designing effective teaching uh, strategies for integrating EK, which is will be a solution for uh, teaching resource limitation, and then it also could assist policymakers in designing relevant strategies to promote cultural literacies. Some key concepts, and these are uh, the themes that I found from the literature. I grouped it into three categories. So pedagogical strategies that can be used by teachers in integrating indigenous knowledge into STEM education could be in-school strategies, out of school strategies and combinations in, in school and out of school strategies. In school strategies, including uh, what is called participatory activities, like literature studies, debates, experiments, and projects on how STEM is related with indigenous knowledge. And it is done in the classroom, right, in the group work. And then the second one is inviting EK holders, like elders and community members, into classrooms and doing, you know, teachers collaborating with them for storytelling and class discussion, many things else. And the second one is uh, out of school strategies. You know, out of school strategies, including field trips, right? To places such as nature and museums where students can learn about the interconnectedness between STEM and EK. And then taking students to uh, in indigenous communities that organizes workshop on traditional practices and then facilitating them for a discussion on uh, STEM IK interconnection. And the last is the combinations of in school and out of school strategies. There are some ways teachers can do. The first one is assigning homework to investigate the application of STEM in the cultural practices within students' families and communities, followed by class discussions to share and explore their findings. And then after classroom STEM learning, teachers can, uh, your students can be taken into, genius, into indigenous communities for contextualizations of STEM learning they learn in the classroom, and then doing interviews to the community members, observation, and then return back to the class for discussion and presentation. And then next, assigning group projects to combine STEM and EK to address indigenous communities' problems. This is quite interesting because uh, this is a, actually project and problem-based learning combined where students help the indigenous communities to solve problems like, you know, uh, problems exist in the community. 
And then the last one, teachers can organize STEM fairs. Yeah, you know, STEM fairs that include criteria for cultural relevance and involving cultural experts in the judging process. So uh, the innovation is that uh, extend an extensions to, you know, common STEM fair, you can include this new criteria like cultural relevance and then the, the judging can be coming from the cultural experts. So that's all uh, about how you can integrate indigenous knowledge into STEM education. Any question? Or feedbacks? Yeah. Okay. Is my poster understandable? Can you understand the idea? <laughs> Okay. Sorry? I don't know if it's a foolish No, no, it's okay. Foolish question is good. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Is because mm, yeah, my reason is that uh, the first one is that because uh, these terms is not always familiar for for all people, right? So I need to go straight to that the integrations of indigenous knowledge into STEM education got benefits for students, right? So the benefits are this, but there is problems, there is challenge to do this, right? This is the challenge right this challenge and i want to solve this challenge right by doing this uh, this is just optional like you can put some uh, percentages of this much yeah. of schools have True. Though the government schools yeah. and private schools have i think that's yeah the despite i didn't find that i wanted to do it but i didn't find the data it's difficult right? yeah yeah, yes. yeah. Well, yes of course mm. True. Any other feedbacks? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, actually, my my bachelor studies in physics education, and I have been learning about STEM education since like 2017 through joining many workshops and anything because I was really interested with STEM education, and I realized that STEM education uh, in developing countries. Uh, needs to have their, you know, DNA that differs with different with Western countries. Otherwise, you just copy the educational system from America and Europe into, you know, like Southeast Asian countries, right? And what we got in Asia is indigenous knowledge, right? And indigenous knowledge can be, you know, working together with STEM education, modern STEM education. So. Based on your experience in the school, Okay, that's a good question. Actually, uh, I've been um, implementing STEM education for almost eight years in my teaching uh, experience in school, but especially in integrating indigenous knowledge is new because uh, I got this idea right around uh, like two, three, couple years. But because I come from Bali, uh, what I have done about this is uh, connecting what uh, what I teach in physics with, you know, Balinese culture, like architectures, right? Anything else. And the most difficult things to do this, actually, the first, the most uh, difficult is the time and locations, right? And also students do not have strong basic physics or STEM uh, knowledge, you know, to, to analyze 
the STEM concepts in traditional cultures, many things. So, so we need to make it stronger first before we do this. Hi. Okay, that's all. <laughs>